This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management for video editing. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll illustrate a variety of techniques to manage media in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. What I want to show is when to use camera native, optimized, or proxy files, how to import media and adjust import settings, how to enable and disable proxies, how to organize files using favorites, how to organize files using keywords and collections, and how to organize files using smart collections. If you have a camera native file which is compressed, MPEG-4, H.264, AVC-HD, you use this file when deadlines are very short and you have limited transitions, limited effects, limited re-editing, and limited exporting. Good examples of this would be news or sports highlights where you just need to shoot it, trim it, and get it up to the web. If you're shooting camera native, which is raw, this requires a powerful computer, but it provides maximum flexibility in color grading. Use optimized most of the time. It's the best for most editing tasks. It provides the greatest flexibility in transitions, effects, color grading, faster exporting, faster re-editing than camera native compressed, and need not necessarily require a separate color grading pass the way that raw files do require a separate color grading pass. Use proxy files when you're doing multicam editing or you're editing on a slower system or you're rough cutting raw footage or you have limited storage space. Proxy files are easy to switch on or off. Let me show you how this all works. Now we're in Final Cut. And let's go import some files. And we'll go to, let's do something underwater. Let's pull something in, the Jim Walker sh shot. I've got a fish shot. I've got a turtle shot. Oh, and I've got a shark shot. Ba -ba -bum. So I'm going to select the clips that I want to import. Now we have to pay attention to these settings. In general, my suggestion is leave the files in place. You've already moved the files to your hard disk. You don't need to copy them into the library unless you plan to move the library from one editor to another. I would just leave the files in place. Keywords can be made from the folder name. Remember I said that naming the folder can be useful in saying this is all of the shots for scene one or this is all the shots for scene three. Well, it can pick up that keyword from the folder name. I tend to leave that on. But here's the important one down here. When both the transcoding checkboxes are unchecked, we're editing camera native. When optimized media is checked, we are transcoding into ProRes 422 and editing the optimized media. When proxy media is checked, we are creating proxy files during import. And when both of these are checked, we're creating both optimized and proxy media, though you can pick which one you're looking at at any time inside the interface. So let me just bring these in and create both. Okay, notice up here the clock icon indicates that Final Cut is furiously working behind the scenes to create all these files. So what do we have here? If I click on our fish icon, go up to the inspector, and go to the Info tab. Go all the way to the bottom. See these two green lights? The original light means that we are online with and can edit camera native media. The green light for proxy means that we are online with, they exist, and can edit proxy files. But there's no optimized. And the reason is the files were already optimized. This happens to be a ProRes file. Final Cut says, ah, this is already an optimized format. It's already an iframe format. I don't need to waste storage space creating something when I don't need it. So it doesn't optimize unless optimization is necessary. So how do we switch between displaying camera native or optimized or proxy? It's up in the view menu right here. When proxy is checked, we see proxy files. Notice how this becomes blurrier and we lose the detail in the fish's face. When this is optimized or camera native, if optimized files exist, that's what's displayed. If optimized files do not exist, original files are displayed. And notice how we have the detail back in the fish's face and the text is cleaner. 
So the inspector tells you what exists, what format exists, original, optimized, or proxy, for whatever file is selected, and you switch back and forth between the different formats by going up to the View menu and switching between optimized, original, or proxy. We can create bins inside Final Cut, except they're called events, they're folders, but a clip like in Premiere, the clip can only be in one folder, one event at a time. Perfectly okay for smaller projects, it works great, but not for bigger projects where you need to have multiple search criteria for your files. We can rename a file by simply highlighting it. Notice how the name lights up. We can change the file name with no problem. But what's even better is we can start to look for select regions by skimming our clip. Let's say I want to pick this spot just where the turtle's about to turn around, right about there, and swims off in this dramatic closing scene. So I set an in and an out that represents where the turtle is doing their dramatic moment. And I type the letter F, which stands for favorite. Now notice the green line that appears at the top of the frame. That says that this range from the in to the out is a favorite. Or here the deadly shark is swimming toward the camera. We'll set an in and we'll set an out and we'll type the letter F as a favorite. I've now created selected regions for these two clips. Because I don't want to see the stuff that I'm not interested in, I don't want to see my non-selects, I'm going to click this menu and say show me favorites. And now I have the favorite section only of the turtle and the favorite section only of the shark. The cool thing about this is that it's easy, easy, easy to do. Select a range, type the letter F, it becomes a favorite, and change your menu. And there's keyboard shortcuts for all of this. If you want to get rid of it, type the letter U to make it unfavorited. And now my clips are there, but there's no green range selected. There's no limit to the number of ranges you have inside a single clip, but we can't name the range. There's a, a limit to what we can label this as. It's good for doing selects, but it's not infinitely variable. A better choice is to use keywords. So here, I'm going to use a keyword by clicking the key command and say this is a turtle. It's a close-up, and it's swimming. This is a shark. It's a wide shot, it's a shark, and it's swimming. And this is a fish. I'm sure it's an important fish. I just don't know what kind of fish it is. It's a fish, and it is resting. Notice while I'm adding these keywords, I can say, show me all of my close-ups. Show me all my fish shots. Show me all my swimming shots or my wide shots. These are called keyword collections and are built automatically by Final Cut. What we can do with keyword collections is very quickly say, show me all of my scene 21 shots, or show me all my exteriors, or show me all the people wearing a red hat. But sometimes we want to get fancier than that. So I go up to this search magnifying glass and click this icon. This opens up a search filter, and I want to search on a wide variety of different things that I can search on, but the one I use the most is keywords. This is a list of all the keywords that I have available in my project. I want to find all of my close-ups, just uncheck all, find all my close-ups that are sharks. Well, the way this reads is, if it's a close-up or it's a shark, let it appear. Well, I want to see where it's both a close-up and a shark, so I'm going to say include all. And now I have nothing which is a close-up and a shark. Show me a close-up and a turtle. Show me a close-up and a fish. Show me something which is either a fish or a turtle. You can start to see the power that we have here. These are called Boolean and or Boolean or. And I'm only working with three clips here, but imagine it's 300 or 3,000. Suddenly, the ability to search based on keywords opens up a huge new way of using this metadata, these labels, to keep track of clips in ways that are far beyond what a file name can do or far beyond what a bin can do. And if I like a particular search, click Smart Collection. That's just simply Apple's word. That means saved search. 
and I can see the smart collection, which is my, this is a fish or a turtle or whatever other criteria I want. In early versions of Final Cut, we were limited to only 27 keywords. The interface has been changed, and we can now do keywords, which are multiple hundreds to choose from. If you're really getting carried away with keywords, you're better off switching to a media asset management system, which is much more heavily database driven. But as a nice interim step between changing file names, which works for very small projects, keywords will take you through a middle-sized project, and then a media asset system can take you through extremely large projects. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management in video editing. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 260. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.